Bob here from Insidium, top tip Tuesday time again. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at this dynamic sand simulation, but this time we're going to use Nexus Question to do some custom colour animations. We'll be doing things like neighbour searches, using fields and more. So let's get started. In our scene, we've got our dynamic flow field sand simulation using a granular solve. And you can see that we've got this display in the viewport. If we go to our emitter, we are in gradient parameter display mode, and we're mapping this default gradient to the granular data within the particles. And that looks great in the viewport, but it's not what we want for render time. So let's change that. We're going to set our color mode to single color and set it to full white. So now all of our particles are white. What we want to do is as they are kind of attracted and move around our flower spline, we want them to go to black. And that black to white difference is going to serve as a mask in Redshift to mix some different colors. So how are we going to do it? Let's go to Nexus. We're going to do this with an NX question object. And what I'm going to do before we do the first question, I'm just going to bring in an action, which is by default set to set color. And we're going to set this to black. Now, because this is an action on its own, no question, it'll just happen straight away. And what happens is all the particles are immediately turned black. But here's a cool thing. If we go to that set color and reduce the weight down, let's put it down to say seven, we're going to get a gradual fade to black. So that's going to work well. So what we want to do is we want our particles to stay white until they are near our uh, flower spline. And we're going to do that by creating a field from this spline. So let's go to the fields tab of our next question. And we're going to drag in our flower object so it becomes a layer. And let's highlight it. And if we go to distance mode, we can put this on radius. And what that does, it generates this 10 centimeter radius around the spline, which follows along all the way along the spline. And that becomes the field. OK, cool. So let's go to our object again with our question. And let's hold control to deselect that uh, action. We're going to add a question make this a child of the question. So now this action will only happen when this question is answered correctly. We're going to click on the question and we're going to say if the particle, not age, we want field is greater than zero, which means anywhere inside that 10 centimeter radius that goes around our spline, then set the color. So let's have a look. Yep, that's starting to work. Very good. So that's kind of what we want. We're getting a little bit of spread happening here. Just to make this more obvious, let's go to our field and let's just increase that size. So you can see by increasing that size and hitting play, now look, the particles are able to become black uh, in a much wider radius around that. All right, so that's the first step. However, what we'd like to do is add a bit more control. And what we're going to do is add another question. Let's go to object. Now, we only want particles to go black if they are inside this field and if they've got quite a lot of neighbors around them. They're in one of these big, more kind of ridgy bits. So how do we do that? Well, we can ask a sub question. So with this question highlighted, let's click on, uh, click on the add question again and it becomes a child automatically. We drag the set color as a child of this new question. And on the new one, if we go to the settings, we can change the operator to and. So it's saying, ask this and this, and only if you answer both of those correctly, do you do this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a particle neighbor search. So we're gonna do particle neighbors within 10 centimeters are greater than Let's try 400. So now we should have fewer black particles because only particles that have got neighbors of more than 400 are going to start going black. And that's kind of restricted that growth a little bit. That's looking good. We could even go higher. Let's go 500. Now bear in mind that this neighbor search is very dependent, obviously, on the amount of particles that are in your scene. So at the moment, that's looking nice, isn't it? At the moment, if we go to the emitter, emission tab, we're only pumping in 2000 particles per frame. 
at production levels, this may be up to 50,000. So if you're pumping in 50,000 particles per frame, if you go back to the question, obviously this neighbor search number is going to have to be way bigger because obviously there's more particles in the scene. But that is looking pretty good. I like that. Now, one last thing we can do to this, we could say that if any of these um, questions are not answered correctly, then do something else. So at the moment we're saying, if it's in the field and if the neighbors are greater than 500, then set the color to black. So what we could do is look, add another question, put it below, and this one we can set to not if, but else. And so if, it, if it's not in the field and it's not greater than 500, then do whatever this one is gonna trigger. So let's copy our set color and let's just put it back to white. Uh, maybe 40%. So it's quick, but not really quick. All right, so now we have got this cool dynamic coloration of our particles. And it's looking nice. Even in black and white, it's looking pretty cool and flowy, isn't it? All right, so let's just leave that for now. Cool. So if I go to my Redshift render view and hit render, you'll see that we've just got our sand particles because we're not using any of this color. So let's leave that there. We'll go to our material manager and this is our sand material that's on our particles. So let's just move that up here. So what we want to do is access our black and white color data. So let's double click. We're going to click on user when we want color user data, bring that node in. In this color user data, we'll go to the presets to get the correct attribute name. And we want particle data, particle color. If I solo this, yes, look, we've got that particle color. And we're going to use this to mix between two materials. So to make this obvious, let's get this base one and make it, I don't know, a pretty horrid green and then we're going to hold control copy that one and this one we're going to make it a horrid pink and then what we want to do is mix these together so let's double click we're going to type in blender we want a material blender and what we'll do is stick this into the surface our green is going to be our base color our pink is going to be our layer one material color and we're going to use this as our mask. So look, we can put this color into the blend color, uh, which mixes those two. And yes, now we have got this dynamic coloration of our particles. Brilliant. So if we hit play, start off pink. And as we bring in the black, very nice indeed and it turns and we get our green highlights and of course this is dynamic because these black and um, white values are changing all the time per frame depending on the simulation depending on the particle na uh, neighbors and depending on that field so this is a really simple but effective way of using color to drive some very nice rendering effects in redshift